poker was gambling, there wouldn't be successful professional poker players, says Rod Lurie in a frequently expressed opinion. It is absolutely a high skill level game. Nor do they readily accept the Vegas argument because Dan Sverdland, a talent manager and poker semi-pro in his mid-50s, says there's been cases where guys have burglarized casinos or they burglarized liquor stores and then they drop the money back in the casinos like 10 minutes later. No one has ever gone after the money in a game before they would have to be setting a precedent here. And this is all complicated by the fact that many of the alleged recipients of the tarnished funds are famous. Toby Maguire, Ben Affleck, Leonardo DiCaprio. These guys can't go to a public casino setting and just sit down and play like a normal person, says Sexton. They are besieged by autograph and photograph hunters. Everyone would know their business. They'd be tweeting actual hands all over the place. These guys have to play in home games. Well, and then there's the Zen defense, best articulated by Kevin Pollack. Quote, if I'm representing Toby, I'd say, Give me every single transaction that you lost in the six months after you received money from this dickhead, that Ruderman guy. Let me show th- let me show that those same funds went elsewhere. That is the ebb and the flow of poker, says Kevin Pollack. Quote Unless they're keeping track of every single hand, which I doubt, adds Joe Stapleton, host of the uh, canceled Fox series, The Big Game, quote, I don't know where they're getting their information. If Toby McGuire wins $100,000 off Mr. Ponzi, he could realistically give $75,000 of it back to him on the very next hand. Or to someone else at the table the very same night in the very same game. You'd be hard-pressed having sat there for six hours to then go back to try and piece together how much money was traded. Joe Stapleton has a point here. One of the enduring questions surrounding this legal showdown is how a con man and a common criminal could have gained access to the rarefied elite of Hollywood players. This guy obviously was vouched for by someone, says Sexton. Generally, in house games, when someone brings someone to a game, they stand for the good guy, which means they got to pay the losses if he doesn't pay them. That's generally the way it works. Now, Why wouldn't a small community with something to lose, money or access, have exercised more due diligence? The answer, says someone who has played in the game but refused to be identified, is less complex than you might think. In fact, they say that may be the whole point. In 2006, this game was created by a financier, says the source, that has not only played in the game since its inception, but also claims to have routinely staked in a named professional player. Quote, the game was created at the Viper Room to blow up high-end L.A. citizens. But the reality is that there are a few L.A. citizens that can actually play Hold'em. Affleck is not my friend, but he's a good fucking player, as is Toby. They have a lot more money than me to toss around, at least they do now. It was a serious game. It wasn't ever opulent. It was well-maintained. There were ladies giving massages. There was always whatever you wanted. There was cocaine. Nobody fronted money, cash. It wasn't a money game. People wrote checks to each other. Now, the first year was about boys who were in the mix. In 2007, it got to the point where it wasn't just about the boys. 
there was a desire to have extraneous money that could be turfed. They wanted to bring boys in who could be trashed. They wanted to blow people up. These guys were trying to ruin money guys who were playing in this game, create some drama for themselves. Well, that could only last for so long. There's a secret senior money crew of people, four billionaires, who are the guys who manage this game. I don't know what the number was, but I know that it was so substantial that it was a primary consideration in their lives. Soon there were people showing up at the game. This was around 2008. Who fucked the whole thing up by writing checks that were too big. The game got too high profile. Yeah, I met Ruderman at that game, says the source. Met him. I never played with him. Blah, 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 blah. I'm the man, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Listen, if your check clears, it's easy to get into that game. They want someone who is going to be a hack. In the poker world, they have a name for this. Dead money. Money that is out on its feet. Money that can't distinguish between accident and agency or a pristine watering hole and one where predators lie in wait. Quote, a lot of people don't know this, but the entire poker games are sometimes dealt around one guy, says Joe Stapleton, whose uh, show The Big Game reconstituted online after the advent of Black Friday, takes this observation at its premise. A qualifying amateur is staked 100 grand to face off against four pros as the designated target. Quote, There's a spot at the table, and you attack that spot. That's what keeps the game going. You want that guy in. You want him in to cannibalize and divide his money. Sometimes a vouch might be, hey, this guy is dead money. Poker players certainly like to see drug dealers in games in Las Vegas because they don't care where the money came from. They're just happy to see a live one sitting at the table, says poker ambassador Mike Sexton. Whether it's Las Vegas, big-time tournaments, home games, the strong play the weak. You look for the limping gazelle. I love that image. (laughs) So it doesn't have to be as overt as what Stapleton calls Meta gaming, playing with such deep pockets that you're virtually fearless, nor do players need to physically gang up on a player and raise him out of a hand just to chop up the pot between them later, a practice known as whipsawing that, according to someone who has played with him, Cassavetes is actually outlawed in his own game. It can be as simple as what legendary senior poker Hall of Famer Robert Chip Burner Turner calls collusion, an us versus them mentality useful in separating the haves from the have laters. And if you have any doubts that poker players might sully their enthusiasm for the game by targeting the money, then go out to the Hustler Club in Gardena some night and watch Larry Flint play for 40 grand a hand against top poker professionals, and then wait till he rolls to the bathroom. The game stops cold, man. You see collusion in L.A.'s casinos all the time, even at the petty stakes that I used to play in. I mean, I got my revenge on a woman who had been re-raising me out of pots with her partner all night. We were playing at a 6-12 limit game. And that means the bets are uh, are limited to uh, the first two rounds, six dollars and then twelve dollars. Okay, uh, I had pocket kings. She had pocket aces. Pre flop, we raised everyone else out of the pot, and we were heads up. And it became apparent that the way she was betting, she had aces to my kings. So what I did to her was, 
at the very last, at the at what they call the river, the last bet of the game, she puts her bet out there. I just shake my head. I get up. I put my jacket on and I make, I fake, really, fake a turn like I'm about to leave disgusted. At which point she throws her cards into the muck. I turn around and say, I call. (laughs) Her cards were gone. They scooped me the pot. She threw a fit. Fuck her. She'd been cheating me all night. She got what she deserved. Back to my story, Dead Money. The source names Bloom as the one who provided women and other amenities to lure high rollers to the game. The guys knew, I knew, weren't trying to get hooked up, he says. The guys who wanted to get hooked up with the girls were the fall guys. We had girls. But counter to published reports, he identifies a man known only as Jeremiah as Molly's employer and the true organizer of the events. Jeremiah is... This host for that game, he says, he runs the full poker business in L.A., and no one has ever brought his name out. I don't even know his last name. 5'9", Mexican, bald head. He's a huge Dodgers fan. Lovely guy, by the way. He ran the poker games with another guy, and they funded all these fuckers. They were the credit line because there was never, ever cash fronted in those games. He was the collections. In fact... A big Chinese guy would show up at my house and be like, hey, can you write a check? So I wrote a check to Jeremiah and his people. And about a month later, I get a call from the FBI. The FBI said this check went to buy 20 keys of cocaine. And the more interesting story is my ex-girlfriend, who was the biggest hooker in the world, I actually enjoyed her being a hooker, she used to go down to this game in Newport Beach that was 10 times bigger. The money they had there at that game was so criminal. I went down there once and she said, you want to take these guys' money? Well, I like to play cards, but I don't play with people who are hit men saying, I'll shoot you. These are not people I want to fuck with. And these guys were the guys that Toby and the guys would get involved with. They got so aggressive trying to win money, man. They thought they were so above the game. I told my guy, a game backer, I don't want any part of the shit you guys are trying to pull off. That was the end of my relationship with them, really. They all went nuts. He claims the games are still going on and offered to get me a seat in a game at the Peninsula for a $100,000 buy-in. Yeah, right. He also recounted in excruciating detail an extremely bad beat where he lost 250000 at the four season. He went down in flame with pocket aces, the odds of which he calculates is one8 percent and is convinced the game was fixed but suggests the high profile players don't realize it they're there to bait the hook and are convinced they're really winning he names michael bay charlie sheen robert downey jr brandon davis megan fox shannon elizabeth mark cuban and the late steve jobs as other household names who have played in the game and he claims william morris endeavor agents were frequent rail bird slash looky loos and says they once had to haul Depeche Mode's Dave Gone out of the bathroom after he OD'd on heroin. Well, the name Jeremiah rang some bells in the poker community. Chip Burner Turner says last year there were a couple of high roller games out of Encino and Jeremiah was the name that popped up running these games. Some of the press about Toby's games makes no sense at all just the handling of the books is a big headache unless you had a piece of the action and a high-end poker dealer says i can absolutely confirm that jeremiah organizes games in la the game i dealt was a large game not as big as toby's but with some of the same people and he organized as you say finance the credit for it to be more specific what jeremiah really does is guarantee that you'll get paid off if you win if you ever don't pay more than the threat of anything happening to you is the threat of never again being able to play in la again 
Now, the dealer also identifies a large Malibu game as Jeremiah's. He finds it highly unlikely that dealers would be cheating since the... 